Hello, my name is Patrick O'Hearn. I'm an author. Today I'm going to talk to you about a book that I wrote um, called Nisim, the Shepherd of Bethlehem. It's illustrated by uh, my friend Michael Corsini. And this book is dedicated to my son Jude. Nisim propped himself up against a rock and stared out at the sheep dotting the hillside. As the cold morning air bit at his cheeks, he pulled his thick wool blanket around his shoulders and buried his face in it for a few moments. His mother, Rachel, had made the blanket for him as an infant, and though it was rather tattered, tattered he still loved it. That evening, after leading the sheep back home, Nisam sat by the fire, eyes dancing, as he listened to his father tell his favorite story, a prophecy from the prophet Micah, who had lived, who had lived 700 years before. Micah proclaimed that the ruler of Israel will come from Judea, his father, Jonas, said. What does that mean, father? How will he get here? Nisam asked. According to the prophet, his father replied, God's promised Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. Nisam loved imagining the Messiah coming to the very corner of the world. Bethlehem wasn't far from their home. Would he meet him in the street? Would he walk across the fields where the sheep gazed? Grace. Every year his father told the story, never saying when it would happen. But when will he be born? Will it be this year? I want to see the Messiah. His father stared up at the stars. We don't know when God's anointed one will come, but we must be ready. Year after year, Nisim asked the same question, and his father gave him the same answer. When he was out in the field shepherding, Nisim prayed every night that he would meet the Messiah. Several years later, God answered his prayers. In fact, according to Nisim, the most brilliant star shone that holy night. As Nisim was tending his flock, an angel of the Lord appeared to him and several other shepherds. Nisim trembled and fell to the ground in fear. The angel told Nisim, Be not afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. How will I recognize him? Nisim asked. The angel replied, You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Nisim gazed in wonder as more angels appeared and began saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Nisim and several shepherds hurry to see the baby. Upon seeing Joseph and Mary with, his, with the baby lying in the manger, Nisim and his fellow shepherds knelt in awe of God's presence. Nisim had never seen such a beautiful sight. Starlight seemed to shimmer around the infant. Mary's face glowed with love. After adoring the infant for what seemed like hours, the shepherds left one by one. But Nisam remained. He didn't want to leave. In the most gentle and sweetest voice he had ever heard, Mary said, Would you like to hold your Lord? Nisam raised his eyes to Mary for a moment in wonder, then stared at the ground. I would, but I feel so unworthy. Because I am a shepherd, I am not even welcome in the temple. Mary waved forward. God sent his son for all people. Nisam raised his eyes to her in awe. I would be honored to hold him. Joseph then said in a very soft but firm voice, Never forget that he is not only your Lord, he is also your brother. Nisam's heart pounded as he cuddled him. He had never held an infant before, let alone the Son of God. Mary said, His name is Jesus. Nisim returned home glorifying and praising God. He ran so fast that his feet barely touched the ground. Is everything all right, Nisim, his father asked. Nisim paused to catch his breath, then hugged his father. You won't believe it. Believe what? Nisim proudly proclaimed. The Savior was born this night in Bethlehem. The prophet Micah was right. His father stared up at the heavens. He sure was. Glory to God. He hugged his son. I'm glad you were ready. I'm glad you were there. What did he look like? asked his mother. 
He had dark brown hair and the most beautiful olive skin. Would you mind if I returned and gave him the blanket you made for me? That would be a loving gesture, replied his mother. I would be honored. The next day, Nisim's parents returned with him to the cave with the wool blanket, but the holy family had left. They wished the animals could tell him where Joseph and Mary had gone. Nisim gently touched the manger, the feeding trough where Jesus had slept, and wished he'd been able to give the blanket to the infant Son of God. As they returned home with heavy hearts, his mother consoled him. Maybe someday you will see them again. Remember, son, the greatest gift you can give God is your love. With each passing year, Nisan was overjoyed whenever he remembered holding Jesus that first Christmas in Bethlehem. His life was forever blessed. After many years, Nisa married Martha. Together they had three children, who they named Joseph, Miriam, and Joshua, in honor of the Holy Family. Nisa's children often, often asked him to retell the story of how he had held the baby Jesus in his arms. It was their favorite story. Nisa often thought about Jesus. He heard about him healing the sick, changing the water into wine, challenging his disciples to love their enemies, and even raising a man from the dead. He wished he could see Jesus once more, and that his children could meet him as well. One year, Nisim's wife and children surprised him by planning a family pilgrimage to Jerusalem to celebrate the fast Passover feast, which commemorated the Israelites' freedom from slavery in Egypt thousands of years before. Nisim had not been to Jerusalem since he was a young boy. Much had changed there, but the temple was, looked as glorious as ever. Nisim's family made preparations to celebrate the Passover meal in their rented room. The following day, Nisim heard a great deal of noise in the city, which he thought was very unusual during the feast. He asked one of the soldiers, Roman soldiers, why is there so much commotion? The soldier replied, a man is going to be crucified today. Who is it, Nisim asked. What is his name? Jesus of Nazareth. Do you know him? I met him when he was an infant. He is the son of God. The soldier laughed. Oh, if he is God's son, then surely he will save himself. Nisim said nothing, but he knew he must do something to help Jesus. He and his family journeyed throughout the city until Nisim saw Jesus in the distance, covered with wounds and carrying a huge cross. Jesus was scarred and injured, so scarred and injured that Nisim cried out at the sight of him, My Lord and my God. Is that him, Father? Nisim's son Joshua asked. I am afraid so. Let us move quickly to get closer to him. To their shock, Jesus fell before their very eyes, the heavy cross landing on him with all its weight. Nisim rushed to help Jesus, but a soldier held him back. What are you trying to do? Stay back. Can't you see he needs help? Just then, another soldier commanded Simon of Cyrene, a passerby, a very strong man, to carry Jesus' cross. Nisim's daughter, Miriam, pulled at his robe. What should we do now, Father? Nisim strengthened his shoulders. We shall follow Jesus. Nisim's shepherd's staff in hand led his family to the hill outside of Jerusalem. The guards crucified Jesus by nailing him to the cross. Nisim and his family could not believe what was happening. Martha tried to cover the children's eyes, but it was too late. All of them began to wet. After three hours on the cross, darkness swept over the land. The children clutched Nisim in fear. Martha picked up the youngest child and whispered in Nisim's ear, I think we should go now. As a shepherd, Nisim was used to storms. He told his wife, please take the children and return to the inn. I will return later. I want to stay with Jesus. Martha pulled Nisim's old wool blanket from around their youngest child and handed it to Nisim. Keep the blanket in case you need it. Nisim's eyes filled with tears as he accepted the blanket from her. It was the very one that his mother had made for him, the one he had wanted to give baby Jesus in the manger. Nisim stayed and watched. With each passing hour, only a few people remained. After being on the cross for a long time, Jesus spoke his final words. It is finished. 
and his spirit left his body. A soldier nearby praised God. Certainly, this man was innocent. Nisim's heart broke for Jesus' mother, Mary, who was standing with tears in her eyes, alongside two women and a young man. As the soldiers lowered Jesus' body from the cross into Mary's arms, Nisim moved closer. Mary held her beloved son in her arms, gently closed his eyes, and kissed his cheek, cradling him just as she had in Bethlehem years before. Then she turned and looked lovingly at Nisim. I remember you, she said. You were one of the shepherds who came to visit Jesus when he was born. You held him so tenderly when everyone else had left. Yes, I was, Nisim replied. With courage in his heart, he asked, Would you accept my blanket for your son? Mary lovingly nodded her head. Nisim closed his eyes for a moment and thanked God, then stepped forward and placed his warm wool blanket over Jesus' body. Mary pulled a blanket around Jesus' shoulders. Thank you. She wiped the tears running down her cheeks. This is not the end, but only the beginning. My son will make all things new. He will rise again. Nisim's sorrowful heart turned to joy in Mary's words. A few, a few days after the return to Bethlehem, news spread about Jesus throughout the countryside. Years later, the evangelist Luke wrote about the events that day, saying, On the first day of the week, at early dawn, they, several women who were followers of Jesus, went to the tomb, taking the spices which they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tombs, from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. Two angels appeared to these women, proclaiming that Jesus had risen. Through all the passing years, Nisim never forgot how much Jesus and his mother suffered for him. Nisim knew he was a beloved lamb in the flock of the Good Shepherd. Even years later, when Nisim's children were grown and returned to visit with their own children, Nisim continued to tell the story of Jesus' unconditional love and how he saw Mary hold Jesus at his birth and at his death.